Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh to some of you and peace out to the rest of you. Black Heart of Sun, I'm black and again asking you to hit that share button. Thanks for those, uh, to those who do, specifically from with the priority. Thanks to you. Um, I would like to give uh, thanks to those who have hit the like and the subscribe. I mean, the like, yeah, the like and the subscribe buttons as well. But the reason I give priority to the share button is because that benefits us and the message is more important than the messenger. Look, the basic premise of my premise of my messages is simply put, be fair. And I don't record this so that men will go and take advantage of women, oppress women, use their money, take from them and not give to them. I don't record the message for that reason. But the thing is that the men who will do that are not in my audience. There are many responsible, selfish, selfish, lazy, uh, narcissistic, manipulative men, but they're not usually in my audience. I would say to you, if you're one of those men, cut it out, but you don't have much of an incentive to obey me. And I'm just a man whose voice you hear or a man whose voice you never heard and don't know existed. But you see, brothers, those of you that are in my audience are usually in my audience because you're the type who would not do this. However, you got sick of these things being done to you while the, the guys who were that type would simply just uh, walk off into the sunset after doing these things to different women. And leaving these women to come back to you with their walls and their defenses up. More difficult for you because they weren't difficult enough for these cats. It's foolish. And I agree. And this is why I say to you men, you're in my audience because you didn't do these things. That's fine. I agree. You shouldn't, um, you shouldn't have to pay a higher or heavier price because of what someone else did. My basic premise though is be fair. I don't have to tell you to give back what you take or to uh, to give to you to women in exchange for what they've given to you. I have to tell men because of how we've been socialized. Take what you have given, take what they take. Don't be more and have more and do more and accept that this is the way it has to be for you to be with her, only for her to come along and still talk to you about how equal you are. That's the basic premise of all the things I've said. Why did I say what I said about the shaming tactic? Who hurt you? I said that because you're not allowed to question them like this when they have standards, anything of that nature, even though they may come to you with standards that you know are foolish and you can tell they're there to protect them from something that someone else did to them before. You have every right to then say who hurt you, but you're not allowed to say that. But then when you simply say you want to protect what you work for, they have every right to come to you and say who hurt you. Even if you're simply saying, well, I learned from somebody else being hurt. Because simply put, see, there are things they're allowed to say to you. There are things they're allowed to do. There are assumptions that they're allowed to make with no basis and no evidence about you because they're women and you're men. And what I'm saying to you is tolerate none of it. You wouldn't do it. Tolerate none of it. So. This is the crux of my message, the premise, the foundation, the common thread through all of it, the basis, the root, common in all of the branches. What you cannot do and what you would not do, do not take. You don't slam doors in women's faces because they complain about something. Don't let them do it to you. You don't go and vent about nothing but problems to a woman in your life. Don't let them do this to you. You don't tell lies that you know they would not tolerate from you. Tolerate no lies from them, especially those same ones. You don't raise your voice to women just because you're having a bad day. Tolerate none of that from them. You don't act underneath your age. Hell, you may not even act your age, but rather above and beyond your age. And you have to, in order to impress them, ex demand the same thing from them. It's only fair. 
You are not some naturally and by default inferior being that you have to do more and be more and have more just to be with them, only to have them come along and say that you all are equals in authority and that your opinion, even your judgment does not count over their mere opinions and emotions. If they come to you like that and you have to do more and have more and be more to be with them, then something has to balance out the equation. And if and that something is submission. You are the leader. They can tell you what they know about a subject, then they fuck the shuck up and go along with your judgment. That's what it is. Should they have an opinion, naturally they will. Should they share with you information that is pertinent, or at least that they think is pertinent, yes, they should. Should you listen, you should hear them out. You will become wiser for doing so. Then you give the final opinion, and if they have something to say about that, but you're taking the responsibility for it, then, in that case, they're out. And if you find, if what I'm saying to you means that you would never find an attractive woman in the West, then that means that the West is the wrong place. That's what this means. Simply by having standards comparable to what they have for you and by which they judge you, you will eliminate semi-attractive, let alone attractive women in the West. I know. I'm married to a black woman that's not Western. She's not Ados. She became African-American. She's naturalized, so to speak, you can say. But she chose to actually leave the West because of its harmful influences. And that's how we met. I came here. I left the U.S. Did not know anything about Ibmore or Sispin. I knew about Red Pill and I knew about MGTOW. And I wasn't going to be MGTOW because I wasn't about to join a bunch of white dudes uh, with their conservative rhetoric for black people. No, the problem is not black men. The problem is Western women. And you're the reason for it. So get out my face, cracker. So I came here. I came to escape the discrimination of the U.S. My friend just uh, sent me a text from Atlanta. He works for his ex-wife because they're friends, but he even said to me, she's, she's part of that problem. She's the, she's the new millennium woman. That's how she pronounced it as a joke years ago. Actually, 20 years ago. We were about to come up on the new millennium 20 years ago, remember? She was talking about, I'm a new millennium woman. Well, you know, they got married and she was a new millennium woman. So what did she do? She assumed everything bad she could about him after she married him, gave him the cold shoulder, didn't talk to him about it, filed for divorce, still didn't discuss it with him. Then after the judge gave the final decree, she said to him in tears, can we talk at a coffee shop? And he was like, I'll listen to you, but I can't imagine what you want to talk about now. Finally, she said to him why she divorced him. And he said to her, you just lost a man that loved you because you assumed that I did X, Y, and Z for these reasons. No, do you know why I did that? I did it because I was trying to make more money so that you could retire at a young age. You never asked me about it. You made assumptions. I didn't know why you were doing what you were doing. Now we split, we lost the marriage. Thank you for waiting until now to come and talk about it. You could have saved yourself a lot of headache and you maybe could have uh, gotten an early retirement as a surprise one day if you would be willing to discuss it with me and ask me my motives. You didn't. So he's telling me that he faces discrimination even from her to a certain extent because she is simply trained to view black men as being incompetent and stupid, even though she had a very good father who provided well for her mother and her and her sister. She's still trained to view black men this way. Not her father, he's the exception, but she's trained to view all other black men this way and expect this. I worked for her myself. She had this view of me to a certain extent. I had to stop and tell her one day, you don't understand. You're giving directives and sending us to places that have closed down and you're telling us don't call you for any extra information. So you send us to an office and it's not there anymore. What do you expect us to do? But don't call you though. And then you want to know why you lose black male employees. This is what you're dealing with because she's nice to look at and she's educated and she's not a mean person just like mean, she's not a hateful person she's a stressed person but because of these things she's up here and she's above and she has all these standards but a man has to have more and do more and be more than her to be with her yet she will not cede she will not understand that he's the authority he's the one in charge but she will make him pay the cost just she won't let him be the boss She's one example of many. 
Brothers, if you're finding this out where you are, that means the West is not for you. If you were pursuing them and they are pursuing somebody else, but you have to pursue them, that means the West is not for you. Get your skill, stack your dough, get that passport, and fit the guck out this father mucker. And while you stacking your dough with your skill, learn about different nations. Because brothers, you gotta understand something. If you can go, you pretty much have to go because America's not gonna stop discriminating. And many black women will discriminate against you, even if they don't mean to do it. One of the reasons is one of the saddest things in the world, but it's true. They'll do it because if they don't, they are pick in the eyes of their peers and they will be treated as outcasts for being fair to you. Do you understand that? You are such the demon, so to speak. I mean, it's, it's like being black in the uh, Jim Crow era. If a white person was fair to you and didn't talk down to you, the others would turn around and call them a nigger lover and a traitor. That's what it was like. You're that bad now. You're that low on the totem pole. Do you understand? You're going to have to go because you may say, well, we've been demonized globally. You know what? It doesn't matter what you do in the West. You're going to be demonized. If you go to other places outside the West and they see that you're not demons, they won't participate in demonizing you anymore. I'm seeing that firsthand. I've been seeing it for the last five years. So I hope that almost about to be six years. So I hope that what I've said is a benefit. Hopefully what I said won't be true one day, but in the meantime, hopefully it'll benefit you. Blackheart, sign of blackout. Assalamu alaikum and black male power.